really interesting to hear what the last speaker was talking about, about wanting to be on a journey and the instigator of the journey to be God. You know, like most of you, I'm not getting any younger. You know, I look in the mirror this morning and I think, who is that old guy looking back? And the years roll by and you think, I really want to be involved in something that I really feel like God is in. I don't want to just go through the motions. I don't want to just rehearse life. I want to feel like at the end of my life when I look back, I don't, I want my legacy to be something that was of spiritual value and not just of earthly value. I go on a, on a cycle route to keep fit. I don't particularly like it, but you know, I do it anyway. And it's five hills. So you go up five hills and on one of the hills, there's like a stone thing at the edge of the road. It's, it's like a rural situation. It's not urban. Um, there's a stone thing on the side of the road and carved on it is the name of a farmer who farmed these particular fields for his whole life and credit to him, all the rest of it. But the truth is nobody's interested in like that stone plaque and the fact that he was some farmer. And yet for him, it was really important. And for his, his um, family, it was important enough to have the stone thing done. But as I cycle past as a casual spectator, I'm just not interested at all. And I'm thinking to myself, well, what if that was his legacy? What is my legacy? How can I make sure my legacy is more valuable? And so it's the things of the kingdom. And so I'm really pleased to share with you this morning my story for Marriage Week, because getting involved in Marriage Week for me was an accident that I think was the beginning of a journey from God. And, you know, my friends around the world, particularly in Europe, who've got involved in Marriage Week, it's become part of their journey with God in an equally profound way. They've seen amazing things happen and they've watched God open doors and close doors and they've stepped back in amazement and thought, how did that happen? So my story begins like ages ago. And what happened was I was... Um, I had a friend who split up from his wife and I was really upset about that. And I went out for a drink with him and I said to him, what are you doing? Is there somebody else involved? Are you fighting? Are you arguing? No, no, nothing like that. Well, what is it then? He said, well, we've just drifted apart because of the pressures in life, pressures for housing, pressures for children, pressures for careers, all these contemporary pressures. And I sat there opposite him at the table. I thought, my goodness, that could be me because we were experiencing equal almost the same pressures at the same time with at the same stage in life if you like and um and then uh what happened was at the time i had a job i was the director of the marriage resource trust which is all about counseling things so i called a meeting everybody came and i said we should do something really positive and proactive to encourage couples who have married to make the most of the marriage that they have just to encourage them and they said that's a great idea Richard if you do it we'll support you and I was a bit younger and a bit more stupid and I thought that was good enough. so you know we launched this thing and uh, pretty easily we got quite a few hundred churches all to say yeah we'll all do something at the same time we call it National Marriage Week you know and it'd be media and churches and things like that and so that was fine. Um, and then um, three weeks before the first ever National Marriage Week, I'm meeting with all these leaders again, and they're saying, what's happening? And they're saying, oh, we're doing this event. We've organized this. You know, they're all being really good. And uh, they turned to me and they said, well, you know, from your perspective, Richard, in National Marriage Week, what's your view? And I said, I'm really upset because I said, I've told everybody it's going to be a media campaign and we're going to have influence and we're going to affect the nation and it's just stuck in church and they said yes but you know if you've got hundreds of churches to do anything together that's a major achievement you should go home and put your feet up and they were nice to me but I went home and the next day I got a phone call 
and the phone call was from a lady who was the first assistant to one of the ministers in the government and she said to me mr kane we've heard about your national marriage week basically the government wants to get involved we want to support what you're doing so this was a bit of a shock to me but i could see the potential i went up to whitehall in london and i had a meeting with them and we sat on this table and they were saying you'll step forward and the minister will do this and all the rest of it and i said wait a minute wait i need to know why you're doing this and they just looked at me like, what? I said, because we're just a little tin pot charity. We have no history. We have no money. We have no staff. I'm, fa I'm working from the garage in my house. I said, and you are like Her Majesty's government. Your department is one of the most important departments in the government. The minister is one of the most important ministers. Why are you doing this? And they looked at each other and then one of them got her finger out and she pointed at me and she said, but Mr. K, you are National Marriage Week and Her Majesty's government want to be involved with you. And I thought to myself, <laughs> I thought, I'm supposed to be the Christian here. They have more faith than I have. I'm just kind of like floating along here. So I thought, so I rose up and I said, well, if I am National Marriage Week, then let it be as you say, you see. And then, of course, the whole thing came alive and, you know, the, it became a massive media thing. Went all around the world. I got so every TV station. And then we did a photo call with the Prime Minister and his wife. And then it, it kicked the whole thing off. And then what's happened is that uh, because somehow it started with that kind of anointing from God and that, impetus from God what I've seen happen in other countries where they've started marriage week is it's not always quite like that but everybody's always surprised at the surprising things that happen almost as if this is a project that just God likes more than others <laughs> I don't know but anyway so that's the that's the backstory you see so I've got a few slides here if we could have the first slide up please so just gonna go through some slides and then we'll uh, have another talk at the end. So what is National Marriage Week? It's a planned focus week which seeks to mobilize churches and oh, I've lost my yeah. screen here. So it seeks to mobilize churches, motivate governments and stimulate the media to say something good. What do I mean by that? Well, um, I remember in Slovakia a few years ago, they got a letter of support from the wife of the uh, president. president. And they were saying, oh, isn't this great? And I said, yeah. And I said, I said to them, now, why has that person done this? And they said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, they couldn't, they can't send out a letter saying we think that marriage is a great idea into a vacuum. What you have to do is you have to create an excuse for a person of influence to do a good thing. So the excuse is, oh, it's National Marriage Week. So because it's National Marriage Week, therefore I can support that. But if there isn't a National Marriage Week, they can't offer support into a vacuum. So that's, uh, it gives an excuse for good people to do a good thing. And it stimulates the media to say something Good. So quite often for marriage, you have loads of phone-ins on the radio and stuff like that and discussing it. And part of that is sometimes they may say things that we don't particularly like, but I would rather have, you know, 95%, which is good, of a lot than 100% of, you know, which is perfect, of a little. So I'm just pragmatic about that. And then the message, the underlying message of marriage week is to encourage couples with a simple statement, which is things like, quote, if you're fortunate enough to be in a marriage, you should look after it. And then signposts. Here are some ways to do that. And it's normally around about February the 14th, which chimes with Valentine's uh, Day. And we've turned it into a global movement. So we're in 26 countries now. Could we have the next slide, please? Uh, this is kind of like, this is this is ages ago. You can see I've got hair, you know, and Maria's, well, you still have hair. That's really cool. And uh, the, the Prime Minister and one of our trustees. And the next slide, and this, of course, is my friend, uh, 
Jonathan Sachs, the former chief rabbi who used to always come along to our marriage week events and he's a great supporter and friend and a lovely, lovely speaker. If you ever get to hear him speak, he's just, it's almost like 5,000 years of biblical wisdom incarnated in one person. Thank you. Could we have the next slide? And you're going to make some comments here, Mary, about the international Yeah, this network. is a photograph from our international conference. So we have a biannual conference every two years, and we get uh, different people involved in Marriage Week to come. But also it's an opportunity for people to come and have a look. So we quite have a lot, lots of people who come from different nations just to find out what it's all about. Is this something I want to be involved with or I know someone who wants to be involved with? So it's no commitment. It's just people coming to have a look a bit like this EA conference we're at now. And uh, we share stories. We encourage each other. We pray for each other. And um, people can ask questions. And uh, it's a great opportunity. And the next one is, will be next year in 2021. Next... So oh, can I have the next slide? So this is the one we had last year. So if you would like to come to have an explore or just meet some of the other people involved, then please let me know because I coordinate this conference. And uh, lots of people on there just come to have a look. And some of them, you know, Romke will be on there somewhere, I think. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Could have next slide. And this is, what, this is in Germany. This is a, a regional team meeting for Marriage Week in Germany that, uh, that we were at. Was it last year? No. Thank you. And then, uh, thanks, the next, that's great. And then let's just go a bit deeper, okay? So why Marriage Week? So I've spoken to lots of people over the years who've said, oh, I want to start a marriage week in my country. I, I, you know, I want to build this ministry. And it's not a project if you want to build a ministry because the nation of marriage week is it's big. It's not linear. It's orbital. So it means if it works well, it kind of goes out of control. And people go like, well, I'm struggling with this. Well, what does that mean? It means it's for people who not so much are into like happy marriage, Shall I say this again? It's not so much for people who like are into like cozy marriage and all the rest of it. It's for people who want to be a blessing to their nation, to take a strategic view and go, this is me scratching the itch of modern people. Modern people really struggle with relationships. They don't know how to make it work. This is me not so much going like, I want to have love and harmony around the home. It's me going, how can I be really strategic about bringing the kingdom of God to my nation? It's also about discipling the nation. When I was a lot younger and uh, in YWAM and things like that, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, the mission of Jesus, you know, go into all the world, make disciples, disciple the nation. And we kind of like talk about it a lot, but actually like, Paul Marsh, who's on this call, said ages ago, it's actually very difficult to do. How do you do that? To do that, you've got to access the nation and you have to get the nation listening to what you want to say. Well, how do you do that? Well, if you don't mobilize media and if you don't take the initiative with the agenda, then you can't do it because those are the halls within which things are discussed nowadays, whereas Paul used the colonnades and things like places like that, we have to use the media. So we've got to find something that will be of interest to the media in, in order to disciple the nation. It also has a very strong local expression when it's done well. So that means that there's kind of like local events all over the country, mostly in church that kind of are like things like renewal of vows, things like uh, communication workshops, things like marriage cakes. It can be a silly thing as well as a serious thing. And the reason why I think silly things are good as well as serious things is that it gets people thinking about their marriage and about their relationships. It's not just like, I have to do this program in the early years, quite often people would ring up and they say, it's National Marriage Week, we want to get involved, what do we have to do? And our people would irritate them by saying, well, what do you want to do? What do you think is going to work where you are? And they'd go, but there must be a program. And we'd say, no, because if you create a program, it's linear, 
And we want to kind of try to stimulate the movement, which means that you have to find your own resources. And they're all out there. You know, there's loads of marriage resources. You just need to have access them. And um, fourthly, you know, why marriage? Don't be put off by the fringe. You know, I, I think lots of people, particularly evangelicals, are, are a bit scared of the gays and the, um, you know, the liberal lobby. And they kind of scared to do something because it might backfire horribly. And it's true, it might backfire horribly, but it never really has. Uh, because, you know, we can give you guidance on how to answer awkward questions and things. And, or you can decide to be positively ambiguous, which is like you just avoid that whole topic successfully or you can answer the questions or you can do what you want but it would be a great pity if the liberalizing agenda were to spoil something that would have been really good news for 95 percent of the population that would be a bit of a shame wouldn't it so i'd say don't be put up by the fringe scratching the itch we've already talked about and the whole idea now because we're Marriage Week is in over 26 nations. We, we'd like a movement now, like Maria was on about. So we have this conference, there's a sense of togetherness. And particularly if you're coming from a smaller country, that's really valuable to feel like you're part of something and you can introduce that to politicians and mayors and things like that and say, look, you know, we're part of something here. It's not just us doing our own thing on our own. Could we have the next slide, please? Thank you. What is the context? Well, I think the context into which marriage week flows is that populations, are, particularly in Europe, are broadly identified with Christianity or at least traditional values. So they may say, oh, cohabitation is the same as marriage, but deep down they know it's different. They don't know why they know it's different, but they know it, it's different. And so there's more of an identification with more orthodox values than um, than you'd imagine, really. Uh, and, and they also context, the old reasons to stay married had gone. So in, as you all know, in the olden days, economics was a great driver for marriage. You know, it was the bringing together of estates and things. And then also the, the bringing together of a, a man and a woman so they didn't need to have uh, their own homes. They could have a home together as a couple and the economic value of that. And that's still alive today as you're aware of I'm sure but also the stigma to do with cohabitation mostly particularly in Western Europe has gone which initially I was thinking oh that's a bad thing because I am very orthodox but actually it's a good thing because now the couples who are who are marrying are the ones that really want to marry and so statistically you now have um if you were to marry this afternoon, your chances of staying together till one of you dies is the same as it was in the early 70s. Because all the, all the couples that married after between the 70s and now included those who felt they were under a duty to marry because they were pregnant or something like that. So they were, they were experiencing external pressure. And now that external pressure is largely gone the ones that are marrying are the ones that really want to marry. So they're more likely to make a success anyway, which means that the, the perceived value of marriage is increasing because they, people start to see that it is really successful as opposed to anything else, which is interesting. People are afraid of failure. They're scared of making that commitment in case this isn't the right one and they don't know what love is and they go like, well, what is love? And they have no idea and they think it's a feeling like you can you get the door down? A, a gushy feeling and you know the infatuation when that subsides does that mean I'm no longer in love what does it mean to be in love one of the reasons why we need to do marriage week is we need to explain these things to people because they have no idea they've just like got it all off tv and it's a nonsense uh, people are confused over cohabitation they don't know whether cohabitation is the same as marriage they don't know what the difference is they say it's just a piece of paper and i say well that's true if it's just a piece of paper it's amazing because it makes you healthier wealthier and you live longer so how does that happen if it's just a piece of paper and then you can explain it all you know and they've heard bad reports they've heard 
her, you know, our, our children who are young adults, a lot of their friends have married and then it's just ended in, in disaster and they go like, I'm not sure I want Well, they're nervous. It makes them nervous and anxious. You know, they think, well, I've just heard bad news. I mean, not much good news really, but anyway, it results in stronger marriages because of the reasons that I, I, I mentioned already about these statistics. Could we have the next slide, please? And the numbers, let's just have a look at the numbers for Marriage Week. So uh, we think 5,200 volunteer leaders hosted an event somewhere in the world. 624,000 people physically attend a Marriage Week event each year, probably more than that. And a staggering 520 million people will have heard something about Marriage Week on the media, either in depth or just superficially. And, it, and, and then, you know, does it work? Show me something that works, please, is one of my favorite things. Well, it works in Bulgaria. Well, it works everywhere, but particularly in Bulgaria, they've seen a 35% increase in marriages. Shall I say that again? 35% increase in marriages over the time they've been doing National Marriage Week. They've also seen a 13% or 15, I can't remember, decrease in divorces in Bulgaria. In the UK, divorces stopped increasing and marriages are lasting longer. So these are interesting. Could I have the next slide? So let's have a closer look at Bulgaria, just to zone in on one, you know, quickly. 26 public events took place this year, 60% more than last year in all these cities. Uh, in October 29, they organized special events, invited leaders of NGOs, businesses, medical. This is in October, so in preparation for Marriage Week in February, they did that pre-meeting. Uh, that went really well. 25 people came from the capital. Most of them were able to do an event or something. Next slide, uh, please. Uh, and this is kind of a, a your classic event. I think this is one they did at the university. Thank you. And the next slide. Uh, special folk, They had a special kind of theme this year on young people and single people. So they went to three different universities and they spoke there and shared personal stories. And then they invited the mayors everywhere in Bulgaria to support the initiative. We've got 19 mayors to get involved and to sponsor Marriage Week, which is great. And they do that also in Germany. That goes very well. And the next slide. This is kind of them doing things with students, I think. And the next slide. Uh, one of the speakers this year in the School of Successful Marriage was a motivational speaker who is a pastor and who leads on a talk show on marriage and relationships. So that went really well. Um, and then they did a thing with the Orthodox Bishop, a Muslim cleric, and head of the National Statistics Center. So that's your classic Marriage Week national event where it's very eclectic and you bring together people who wouldn't normally share a platform, but because it's for marriage that they all pretty much agree on, and because it's for only one week a year, they go, we'll be co belligerence on this and we'll join together in order to make something have more impact. Could I have the next slide? And this is an Orthodox Bishop doing something with a registrar. And the next slide. And then media. Oh, they just get so much media. Four national TV stations did TV shows, you know. You know, I'm not going to read it all, but just the next slide. <clears throat> and then they received 17 personal stories for a, a competition for married people. The topic this, were, this year was the heritage of the good example. Stories and testimonies touched many, including the jury of a context which... And the next slide, please. And this is the team who, who run it there in Bulgaria. There's only one of them that I know, the young lady in yellow, who is the leader of the uh, project there. And the next slide. And there she is speaking at this um, event uh, with her husband. And she, and she works out from uh, an enterprise called the, uh, oh, something like the Office for Conservative Values in Bulgaria. They're like a policy think tank, you know. Uh, thank you. And the next slide. Here she is on TV. And the next slide. And this is an event I'm speaking of there. Can you see with a, a translator? That's the School for Successful Marriage. 
Um, so all these people come along. They're a mixture of Christians and people aren't, aren't Christians and they just really lapped it up really. It's great. And the next slide, happy people. Thank you. Next one. Next one. Uh, this is us on TV over there. Thank you. And the next one. What? I don't know what I'm saying there, but obviously having some impact. Thank you. Next one. Okay. So how could Marriage Week strengthen my EA? Where I am. So I'm running out of time here. So it's a very positive message. Shall I say that? It's very positive. So it positions EA as being a very positive ministry in your nation. It, you're tapping into a knowledge bank because the rest of us have all done it for so long. You know, you tap into all this experience and knowledge and it positions EA in your nation as being a catalyst because, because it's eclectic. What you have is a single agency that introduces this and then invites others around the table and says, come on, let's find our common ground here that we can actually do something positive with. Instead of so you build bridges instead of walls, which to me is always more helpful. So and it's really helpful to many couples, not just in church but outside church. Often, you know, what couples need is just a little bit of encouragement and guidance, you know, and a bit of a pat on the back and say you're doing fine. Keep going in the direction that you're on, and um, and that's what Marriage Week can provide. So it's great on that regard. It positions your spokespeople as experts on family all year round. So we get this, we get phone calls all the time, not just in marriage week, because once you're in the book as being an expert on something, they ring you up all the time. Um, uh, no one has wanted to start a marriage week. Nobody said, I really want to do this. They've all got like, I don't really want to do this, but I feel like this would be a great thing. And then having started it, they really enjoyed it and uh, they found it a great uh, resource. But nobody's wanted to do it they've all felt this is something i really ought to so i don't know if that encourages you at all and what happens if you don't do it you know what happens if there isn't ever a marriage week in your country it's like well what was the opportunity cost you know what of course we don't know and of course there might be other enterprises which are just as good but i'd encourage you to say look this is something that i think god's really in i mean we don't do much. We just kind of nurse, nurse it along. But it seems like God inhabits it, really, in a funny kind of way. And the next slide. This is our website. You can go on to have a look. We've got interviews here for uh, mostly the leading couples from most of the countries where they just tell their story about how they, they got started. There's an in-depth interview with us where we tell our story. And then there's a little two minute uh, interview, like a montage thing that you might find useful as well. And the next slide, I think that, that might be the last slide. Is that, is that the last slide? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so the last one. We're running out of time now, which is great, 29 minutes. Not bad, bang on the numbers. But I just want to encourage you, you know what I mean? This is like, a, this is a great project. It's not without risk, not without peril. Uh, but it just kind of like is a great kind of ministry to your nation. Uh, it's not that difficult. In fact, it irritates people because it's so simple. But I like simple things because I'm a simple person. I like things that work. I like things that are effective. You know, I don't like to talk a lot. I like to get on with things. And, um, you know, I'd, you'd, I'd be really excited to rehearse any interest that you have from countries that aren't doing it. But in the meantime, my final comments on coming into land is that many of you on this call, to a greater or lesser extent, are involved in Marriage Week in your nations anyway. And I just need to say, like, I'm just here telling this story, but actually it's your story because it's you who have done it all everywhere. You know, I'm just like the mouthy guy at the front, you know what I mean? But I know I haven't really done very much. And I know that like, you know, um, people in Germany and Switzerland and Hungary and Romania and Ukraine and all those other countries in Europe that may be on this call, maybe not. I know it's all of those people who've done all the hard work and have had the courage to 
take it forward. So did you want to say anything finally? Mrs. Yes, I just want to thank you all for all you've done, whoever has been involved with it. And contact, contact me if you want further information, because yeah. I'm the contact person. Yeah, don't come that way. I'm not very good. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to hand back now, but just to say, um, yeah, God bless you all. I've really, I've been in on this um, conference every morning and I've really enjoyed the passion and the vigor and the enthusiasm and also the, uh, the, uh, the love really, the fellowship between one another. So thank you.